Hi, I'm Fernando Pereira from UFMG, and today we will talk about the LVM intermediate representation. We call this kind of low level programming language the LVM IR. We have already seen that a compiler is formed by three modules the front end, the middle end, and the back end. In the previous class, we saw that a possible front end for LVM is Clang. The middle end is represented by a tool called OPT, and the back end is represented by a tool called LLC. The middle end operates in programs written in the LVM intermediate representation. Typically, when this intermediate representation is given in assembly, which is in a readable ASCII format, we add the extension LL to the files. Notice that these files, the LL files, are translated from some high-level programming language, such as C, for instance. And they can be translated to some target architecture using some backend. Anyways, much of the charm and elegance of LLVM comes from its intermediate representation. But what is this programming language, this IR? How does it look like and what can we do with it? That's the subject of this class. First of all, the intermediate representation is a programming language. That means that we can write programs on it. The IR was mostly meant to be generated automatically by a compiler, but nothing really hinders us from writing programs directly in the IR. But because it was meant to be generated by a compiler, it's low level. So the IR looks pretty much like an assembly program, which we can analyze using tools in the LVM infrastructure. And even more important, that we can optimize using LVM passes. Let's take a look into an example. I will show you a program and we check how it looks like in the LVM intermediate representation. This program has been taken from a presentation written by um, Janari Pekimenko, which is readily available on the internet. The presentation itself talks about many other things besides the LVM IR, so I highly recommend it. Anyways, Gennady's program consists of a function that receives an argument through a pointer and updates that memory location. And to make things more complete, here's the code that invokes the function. To generate the equivalent program in the IR format, we can use this command line, which we had already seen in the last class. Notice that our example is stored in a file called coli.c, and we are producing a file called coli.l. We use the minus s flag to indicate that we want to produce an assembly file, otherwise we would produce a binary program. And we use emit LVM to indicate that we can, that we want this assembly in the LVM intermediate representation. Otherwise, we would have assembly of the target architecture. In this case, that would be x86. Let's take a look into the IR file then. Let me first just reduce the size of the source code so that everything fits in the figure. You will see that the IR file is somehow large compared to the original program. That's natural because we have a lower level representation of the same program. And mind it that we are not even showing the entire thing. The rest of the file I will omit uh, to focus on its most interesting part. Notice that we have two functions in the IR file. That's because we have two functions in the source file. Let's take a look into the code that LVM produces for this function, for instance. Here it is. There are a number of things to notice here. First, the program is in assembly format. That means that the function is formed by a linear sequence of instructions. Each instruction has an opcode. The opcode is the name of the operation that the instruction runs. As an example, this program uses six instructions and five different opcodes. Another thing that's interesting to notice, the LVM IR is typed. That means that the values that the program manipulates have types. In this example, we have three different types. We have integers of 32 bits, like the return of the function. We have pointers to integers of 
32 bits, like the type of variable x, the argument of function call e. And we have pointers to pointers. In this case, pointers to pointers appear as auxiliary variables that the compiler needs to implement in the program. Notice that we can optimize the IR. For instance, we might want to move variables from memory into registers. To do it, we can use the, an OPT pass called man to reg. But to do it, we need to indicate to Clang via the xclang argument that the IR will be further transformed by OPT. If you don't use this flag, then LVM will add the opt none qualifier to the functions in the IR, and that will prevent the program from being optimized. Anyways, after disabling this marker, the opt none qualifier, you can optimize the function. So in this case, we are using an optimization called main to reg. Can you imagine by thinking about its name what this optimization does? Basically, this optimization will be moving variables that are stack allocated to registers. We can see that our target function contains variables allocated in the stack because we see instructions that operate in memory like alloca, store, and load. Alloca mostly means that we are allocating on the stack. And here's our optimized function. Notice that local variables are now in registers. These are not architecture registers, but rather virtual registers, values that can be placed in physical registers once machine code is generated. These variables have names that start with this percent sign, like percent zero and percent add, for instance. In addition to using LVM to manipulate the IR, we can program it directly. It's just a text file anyways. So we can edit. Imagine, for instance, that we want to change this function. Instead of passing the argument through a pointer, we want to pass the value directly. We could, of course, write the program in C and then use LVM to generate the optimized version. But we can also simply change the IR editing its text file. And that's the equivalent code that we have. As you see, it's just a matter of writing the function ourselves. Of course, we need also to change the code that invokes our optimized function. We will not be passing an address anymore, but just the value itself. And that's how the entire program looks like after we hand optimize it. We can further transform this program to other representations. For instance, let's assume that this program, with all the information that an LVM IR file requires, is called colleopt.l. We can compile it to LVM bit codes using LVM AS. LVM bit codes are the binary representation of programs in the LVM IR. Then we can translate the bit codes to assembly of x86, for instance, using LOC, which is another tool that's part of the LVM infrastructure. And we can use the Linux assembler AS to translate x86 into binary code that's architecture dependent. And so we end up with four different representations of the same program. Two of them are in binary format, and the other two are written in ASCII, so you can read these files without any problem. But mind it that these four representations, they have the same semantics, they represent the same program. And that closes our presentation. It was rather brief, though. Much more information about the OVM IR is available in the language manual that you can see in the reference. Uh, and also, I recommend a YouTube uh, tutorial by Philippe de Azevedo and Vince Bridgers to those who want to dive deeper into the IR. Finally, I thank uh, Luigi Soares and Johannes Doffert for reviewing this presentation.